Right guys, welcome back to the Clack Shack and tonight I got a special treat for you guys that's been watching the channel for a little while and uh, it's something that you've never uh, really got explained to you or never really got to see in action and it's finally cold enough thanks to this little blast of cold air that we got coming down. It, it's not so cold that I need it necessarily but it's finally cold enough that I can actually fire up the old uh, wood burning heater here and uh, just get that just get that smell in the air and make sure everything's going to work on it that I don't need to do any welding before it actually does get cold enough that I've got to have it. So tonight I've got some repairs I've got to do on my package delivery box which we'll get into and I'll be working on this. So stick around for a few minutes and I'll uh, kind of walk you through the history and the build that is the Clack Shack heater. So stick around for a minute. Right guys, so before I get started, while I'm working here, uh, I wanna explain something to you. This, uh, this heater was a brainchild of mine shortly after I, I built the shack, maybe like two years ago and put the walls in and the door on and all that. It, it got a little cold in here in the winter time. Uh, I had no source of heat. And so I determined that I needed a heater. Well, I went to looking all over Marketplace and Amazon and everywhere, trying to find a heater that, that I could put in here that would be affordable but effective, but didn't take up a whole lot of room because room is a premium in here. And so I kept looking for wood heaters and guys, those things, you know, they can be huge. Everybody was using 55 gallon drums and stacking them. And there was all these different designs of uh, wood heaters, but none of them really fit what I needed. I wanted something that was, was tall, that would hold a lot of wood, that would generate a lot of heat, but I didn't want it to be too big. So one day uh, while walking up the back side of the property toward where the mill is, uh, I happened to walk by my scrap pile and that is a, 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 a pile of, you know, miscellaneous broken metal things that I kind of stack them up until I get enough to make it worth my trip. And then I load them on a trailer and I take them to the scrap yard and they'll give you, you know, 10, 15 bucks for them. Nothing, nothing major, but it kind of offsets the fuel price of taking it to the scrap yard and it gets rid of the stuff that you can't just burn or throw away. So this was a, my hot water heater was sitting there cause I had just replaced it and the old hot water heater was sitting there and it had the, the you know, the, the plat, the metal around it. And of course it's spray foamed with insulation and all that. And I'll try to dig the pictures up from the build just to add to the, to the, to the uh, video to make it a little more interesting. But after about a good solid day of manual labor, I was able to get the, uh, the bulk of the insulation because this thing was like literally, it looked like it was dipped in foam insulation and then wrapped with that real thin tin. But this is the tank part of that hot water heater. And I used, uh, my grinder with some cutoff wheels and my torch and my welder to retrofit it into a functioning wood heater. And so what I'm going to do today, guys, is I just want to get this thing fired up. This will be the first first firing of the heater uh, since uh, last, I guess, right before spring came in and make sure of what upgrades I need to do. My little gasket right here is uh, kind of falling apart i may need to regasket that while i got it out uh, but somewhere around this shop somewhere there's some more of this gasket material so what i'm going to do right now guys i'm going to clean the glass up because this glass is it's got soot all over it. you can't see through it this is actually amber colored uh, ceramic that is also where you can see through it that'll withstand the temperatures uh, this thing will generate if, if I stoke it and get it really fired up, it'll generate up to a thousand degrees, which I don't like doing because this starts getting really nasty hot in here then. But give me just a few minutes. Let me get this cleaned up and see if I got any more uh, of the sealant for the, for the glass. And I'm going to reinsert the glass and we'll try to get this thing some wood in it and get it started. <clears throat> All right, guys, I got the uh, glass cleaned off to where I can actually see through it now. And I'm going to load this thing up. 
all these little scrap pieces of wood that I come up with throughout the year. Uh, I try to keep as much of this stuff as I can within reason until it gets too, too, too bad of a point. And all this little scrap pieces of wood end up getting recycled into the heater. Uh, I've got some lighter pine that I usually split and keep in here, but when you got a lot of these little pieces like this handy, it is relatively easy to get this guy rolling. So what I'm gonna do tonight, like I said, I'm just gonna get it fired up, make sure it still uh, functions and doesn't need any work. That way when it does get down to where it's measurable out here, uh, hopefully I'll have any issues that need to be addressed, corrected by then. So, and the way this works, guys, I've got two draft controls. This is my main air, and then I've got a, this one is more for once I get it going, but I leave that, that big one on until I get it started. And uh, these old uh, stain-soaked rags work really well for getting, uh, getting a little heat in there. So what I usually do with those stain soaked rags is I just throw them off to the side, let them sit there for a few minutes and dry, and then I'll throw them in and use them. So that's what I'm gonna be doing tonight is just getting this guy fired up, making sure she still burns good and works and doesn't have any issues. So it's probably going to smoke and burn a lot of that dust off of it, hopefully. Uh, but once we get her, uh, once we get her going, get a little updraft going in it, everything will be a lot better. So the uh, problem that you have is until you get it hot, the smoke does want to come out of these little cracks. Because, like I said, that's why I don't worry too much about my ventilation in the shack, guys. All right, guys, I got her rolling. I've turned off all of the, uh, all of my little air valves down here now that I've got a good, once, once I get a little heat going in to, to kind of throw some heat out the top, then uh, the smoke generally gets pulled in instead of coming out. So, like I said, it's not 100% smoke proof, guys, but in the winter time, this thing is a blessing. And once all those rags and stuff that I put in there to, and, and once all of the dust and dried up uh, soot from last year gets burned out of there, it'll start burning a little cleaner. But right now it's, uh, it's just starting to get warm. So we'll give it a little while, but in the meantime, I've got to get my package box back fixed and back going. So I just want to introduce you guys to my heater. Uh, that you will be seeing a lot more of this winter as it gets cold. Uh, right now, it's not really cold out. My, my fingers and all that are good, but it's supposed to be, uh, they're saying in the 30s tonight, and in Alabama, the 30s is not what we want. So it's going to take a little adjustment on my part to get used to it. But I'll let this run for a little while, guys. I'm going to go work on my package drop-off box, getting that thing back up, and then I'll check back in with you in a little bit. Show you. I got my <clears throat> package delivery box stood back up. I had to replace the, uh, the failed attempt at a 4x4. I replaced it with a piece of... Uh, Traded six by six that I had, had to build some uh, little bracing and stuff, but I got that in the ground, got it back up and going. And around here, we have to have the package drop off box because it is almost daily that something's getting dropped off. Now, I'm gonna give you a little quick tour of the heater. I told you the history, this was a hot water heater, okay? So the inside of this thing is lined with glass because hot water heaters, what they typically do is they put glass on the inside of them to keep them from rusting so that you don't get all that rust and stuff in your water over the years. Uh, this hot water heater served us well inside the house for 15 years and I had replaced it with uh, a, a little bit bigger one than what this one is. But this tank is supposed to be a 50 gallon tank. So it's pretty good size on the inside. And what I did is I took and I cut it up put me a door in it, ordered me some glass off of Amazon, used some old bolts and uh, washers and springs and stuff that I have in bins over here. Some of y'all have talked about wanting to see what all I've got laying around. And, and guys, I, I have a hard time throwing anything away because when I'm building something like this, you'd be surprised where pieces come into, into play and some of the scrap iron that I keep I actually wind up repurposing it. Uh, so I had to buy a couple of pieces of flat steel to do my little window here. Uh, and then I had to buy some uh, 
fireplace caulk to kind of caulk that up. It still has room for improvement by all means. I, I know I could. And one of these days I may actually build me a new heater and get this guy out of here. But guys, the, 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 the whole idea of recycled material is well, I live and well on this thing and, and it works. But uh, right here in this area to kind of slow the flow of the uh, smoke down and get the heat out of it. Uh, when I was building this thing, I had a couple of brake discs off of a buddy of mine's car that we had did a brake job on. And they were in pretty bad shape. We had to beat them to get them off the car and everything. So they were in my scrap pile. And I went and got those guys and made myself a, a U-bracket out of some rebar. And that thing, there's two brake rotors that hang here and here. And if you're familiar with brake rotors, of course they have holes in them for the lug nuts, the hole in the center for the bearings. And then throughout the rotor itself, it's vented to allow air to flow through it so that your brakes stay cool when under heavy braking and that kind of thing. And they're also made out of a, of a steel that is kind of, they, they try to engineer it to where it'll dissipate heat better. And so those were the perfect pieces for me to fit right here and they fit exactly. I was able to push them in through the door, turn them sideways, set one on top of the other and then run the U-bolt up through to the top and I came out uh, one of the holes where the, uh, the water went into the uh, hot water tank and pulled that rebar out, welded it and then chopped the end of it off to hold everything secure. So that slows down the air as it's going from the, from the bottom below the grate where the air intake is up through here, it runs through the baffles, it goes through the valve in the back that controls the flue, and then out. And so the purpose of that, guys, was so that all my heat wouldn't go out the chimney. And like right now, you can the chimney at that point right there at the top is 162 degrees, which that's pretty hot, but when you consider that right here, this part of the heater currently is at 360 degrees, that's that's that heat is not going out that flue because it's going through there a lot of the heat's getting dissipated and then it's going out the top now down here in the bottom where the coal bed sits below the grate uh right now it's running about 575 right there on the surface of the on the surface of the heater all right and as you'll notice i've got my little thermal reactive fan there and this thing doesn't have batteries or anything like that if you see this thing spinning in my videos you know i've got a nice little fire stoked over here because it runs off of the heat it produces its own electricity using the uh the air drafts that come up off the heater and there's some science to that so if you really want to know how that works guys you'll just have to google it i don't i don't want to try to explain it uh but the back wall back here one of my concerns when i built it was that the wall would get too hot and right here on the wall, you're looking at 150 degrees, 130 degrees, which now some of that may be reflective heat too because this is an infrared uh, gun and I'm shooting it at a reflective surface. But this back wall, you can actually put your hand on it. I don't even think it's 100 degrees. I mean, it, it actually right here, it feels cooler than my hand. Right behind the heater, it does get a little hot. But the way that I kind of try to put a buffer back here is I've got an aluminum grate that I've uh, attached to the back of this to serve as a heat sink, kind of like they have on, uh, on uh, computer components and stuff like that. That was a bit of a throwback to my computer building and CB radio repair days. So that kind of grabs the heat as it comes through and just basically absorbs the aluminum, absorbs it and distributes it so that as the currents of air go around the heater, it dissipates into the room. So. But that's about it, guys. I mean, I can sit here and talk about the process of building this thing for hours because it took a long time for me to uh, perfect my design. And by perfect, I mean get it to where it worked. Uh, and it works really well for what I do. There is a chance that maybe one day I'll decide that I want a, a, a commercially available heater. But guys, I like the smell of a, of a wood burning heater. Uh, when I was growing up, you know, my grandparents and great uncles and everybody, they all had wood fireplaces and some of them even had wood stoves that they used. So that's just kind of the smell of the fire is part of the atmosphere. So but anyway, guys, some of you had asked about the heater. Uh, several had asked how I stay warm in the wintertime with wintertime approaching. 
And so I just wanted to do a video and show you and kind of give you the backstory behind the heater. So now when you see this big black thing parked up against the wall here, you'll know what that is and understand how it came to life. And yes, it was once a hot water heater, but now it's been upcycled since it was removed from the hot water heater. But anyway, guys, I've got some laser engraving to do, and I know some of y'all really don't care for this type of stuff, so I'm going to get over here and uh, do a video on some lasering tonight. So thanks, and have a good day.